The Battle of Sarakamish Armenian, Sarigamizi Kakadamart Sarigamishi Chakadamart, Russian, Srezeni pre Sarakamis Turkish, Sarakamis Harikati was an engagement between the Russian and Ottoman empires during World War I. It took place from December 22, 1914, to January 17, 1915, as part of the Caucasus Campaign. The outcome of the battle resulted in a Russian victory. The Ottomans employed a strategy which demanded that their troops be highly mobile and to arrive at specified objectives at precise times. This approach was based both on German and Napoleonic tactics. The Ottoman troops, ill-prepared for winter conditions, suffered major casualties in the Allahuekbar Mountains. Afterward, Ottoman leader Enver Pasha publicly blamed his defeat on Armenians and the battle served as a prelude to the Armenian Genocide. Topic. Background Russia viewed the Caucasus Front as secondary to the Eastern Front, which enjoyed the major share of Russian resources. Russia had taken the fortress of Kars from the Turks during the Russo-Turkish War in 1877, when it was incorporated into the militarily administered Kars Oblast. After the Ottoman Empire entered the war in October 1914 on the side of the Central Powers, Russia now feared a Caucasus campaign aimed at retaking Kars and the port of Batum. From the point of view of the Central Powers, a campaign in the Caucasus would have a distracting effect on Russian forces. The Ottoman plan for this campaign found sympathy with German advisers, as a success in this region would mean a diversion of Russian forces to this front from the Polish and Galician fronts. Germany supplied resources and the Ottoman Third Army was used in the battle. The immediate strategic goal of the Caucasus campaign was to retake Artvin, Ardahan, Kars, and the port of Batum. As a longer-term goal, head of the Ottoman War Ministry Ismail Enver hoped a success would facilitate opening the route to Tbilisi and beyond, which in turn would trigger a revolt of Caucasian Muslims. Another Turkish—or rather German—strategic goal was to cut Russian access to its hydrocarbon resources around the Caspian Sea. Topic. Prelude The headquarters of the Ottoman Third Army was in Erzurum, under the command of Hassan Izzet. On 30 October 1914, the Third Army headquarters was informed by high command in Constantinople about the Ottoman Navy's bombardment of the Russian ports of Novorossiysk, Odessa and Sevastopol in the Black Sea. High command expected the Russian army to cross the Ottoman border at any time. The Bergman Offensive November 2, 1914 to November 16, 1914 ended with the defeat of Russian troops under Bergman. The Russian success was along the southern shoulders of the line. Hassan Izzet stabilized the front by letting the Russians 25 kilometers 16 miles inside the Ottoman Empire along the erzurum sarakamish axis. The Third Army was a relatively ragtag force when it was assigned to the offensive. The most combat-hardened and well-equipped units in the Empire such as the Third Corps were selected to defend the strategically significant Gallipoli Peninsula. Facing the Russians in Caucasia, of the 3rd Army's nine infantry divisions, three were being rebuilt from scratch and four were new divisions deployed there from Thrace that year. Additionally, many of its approximately 118,000 soldiers were actually gendarmerie rather than regular army troops. Ericsson describes the 3rd Army as hastily assembled and cobbled together army, hurled against the Russians with predictably disastrous results." The war minister, Ismail Enver, devised an operation plan while he was at the Department of War in Istanbul. His strategy was based on German principles copied from Napoleon. Enver's plan involved a single envelopment using three corps. On the right flank, 11th Corps would fix the Russians in place and conduct feint attacks. 
In the center, Ninth Corps would fight in the direction of Sarakamish Pass. Assistant Chief of Staff Colonel Hafiz Haki's 10th Corps, which was to be on the left flank, would drive to Oltu, cross the Alahuekbur Mountains, cut the Kars Road, and drive the Russians to the Aras Valley, where the Russian forces would be destroyed by all three corps attacking in concert. Meanwhile, a detachment unit under Stang Bay would conduct highly visible operations to distract and pin Russian units. Success depended on all troops arriving at their specified objectives at the correct moment. The first part of the plan was fulfilled when the Russians concentrated their forces at Sarakamish and Kaprakoy after the Bergman offensive. Hassan Izzet was not in favor of an offensive action in the harsh winter conditions. He was planning to remain in a defensive posture by pulling the Russians to Erzurum Fortress and launching a counterattack. Hafiz Haki was sent to replace the commander of 10th Corps to energize the 3rd Army. Enver released Hassan Izzet from command on December 14. Izzet told Enver, We have to consider eight or nine days for a large-scaled encircling maneuver. However, during this time the 11th Corps, which will remain at the front, might be jeopardized. Even if we execute the maneuver with two corps, they will probably face difficulties against the enemy. Enver wanted his plan executed through a winter offensive, and decided to take charge. He left Istanbul with General Fritz Bronzert von Schellendorf and the head of the operations office Lieutenant Colonel Otto von Feldman. They arrived in Erzurum on December 21. Senior Turkish commanders opposed the forced resignation of Hassan Izzet due to his rejection of the plan. <inaudible> <inaudible> Battle Battlefield <inaudible> 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 The war zone was nearly 1250 to 1500 kilometers, 776 to 932 miles wide from the Black Sea to Lake Van, which made military concentration difficult. The operation was executed at a plateau averaging 1500 to 2000 meters, 5000 to 6500 feet above sea level. The main difficulty with the region was the roads, with the transportation infrastructure on the Ottoman side far from adequate. Russia's main advantage was the Kars Gumri Akalkalaki railway line and a terminal at Sarakamish. The railway was 24 kilometers 15 miles from the border. The only way for an army to get through the Caucasian heights was the high mountain passes in which lay the city's Kars and Sarakamish. Beyond, the upper valleys of the Aras River and Euphrates extended westward. Everywhere else the roads were mere tracks which were impenetrable to artillery. The forces were concentrated about 80 kilometers 50 miles on each side of the border at the fortresses of Kars on the Russian side and Erzurum on the Ottoman side. The Third Army, under the command of Enver, was composed of the IX, 10th and 11th Corps. Third Army's headquarters and the 9th Corps were located in Erzurum. The 10th Corps was stationed in Shivas, and the 11th Corps was in Elizig a detachment unit under the command of the German Lieutenant Colonel Stang was established from the 3rd Infantry Division, originally stationed in Thrace, to reinforce the offense and pin down the Russians. This detachment unit, known as Stanky Bay, consisted of two battalions of the 8th Infantry Regiment and two artillery batteries. The fighting power of 83,000 regular troops, reserves, and personnel from the Erzurum Fortress totaled 118,000. The total manpower including transportation units, depot regiments, and military police was 150,000. There were 73 machine guns and 218 artillery pieces. Ottoman forces were inadequately prepared for the campaign. Two divisions of the 9th Corps began a long trek with no winter clothing and only dry bread and olives for rations. The Russian Caucasus Army was a well equipped 100,000 troops. 
However, the Russians redeployed almost half of the Caucasus army to the Prussian front due to the defeats at the Battle of Tannenberg August 23 to September 2, 1914 and the Masurian Lakes September 9 to 14, 1914, leaving behind 60,000 to 65,000 troops. To remedy these troop movements Count Alerian Ivanovich Vaontsov Dashkov consulted with the mayor of Tbilisi Alexander Kotsian, the primate of Tbilisi Bishop Mesrop, and the prominent civic leader Dr. Hakob Zavriev about the creation of Armenian volunteer detachments. The Russian Armenian reservists had already been drafted into the regular armed forces and sent to the European theater. The volunteer units consisted of Armenians, who were not citizens of the empire or obligated to serve. However, many other, non-Russian communities were also represented in the Russian Caucasus Army as volunteers, conscripts, and regular soldiers and officers. These particularly included men who belonged to Christian Orthodox communities settled in the surrounding Kars Oblast since 1878, such as Georgians and Caucasus Greeks, who generally saw service in the Russian Imperial Army as a means of achieving their own community's ambitions to recapture Greek Orthodox territory from the Muslim Ottomans on the back of the Russian Imperial Enterprise. Originally, there were four volunteer battalions created. Along the Kars Oblast, the 3rd Battalion commanded by Hamazasp, Hamazasp SR Vanstian, and 4th Battalion by Kerry Arshak Gavafian, operated on the front facing Erzurum between Sarakamish and Oltu. The commander-in-chief of the Caucasian Military District Caucasian Army, was Alerian Ivanovich Vaontsov Dashkov. Effective command was in the hands of Infantry General Alexander Zakharevich Myshlyevsky, who was originally a military historian graduated from the Imperial General Staff Academy. General Nikolai Yudinik was his chief of staff. Topic. Initial maneuvers, December 22-28 Hafiz Haki was at the left flank. His order was to move the 9th and 10th Corps to Sarakamish and Kars. He contemplated a two-step plan, a sudden initial attack and a second step with both corps proceeding at full speed towards Oltu. He expected the assault at Nerman to be concluded by the afternoon of December 22. Then the Corps would march 30 km a day and arrive in the Kars Sarakamish line by December 25. Two divisions of the Stang Regiment had been sent by sea from Constantinople to Trabzon. On early December 22, Hafiz Haki ordered his troops to move forward. They engaged in a brief skirmish against a Russian brigade commanded by General Estoman near Kalabogazi, west of Oltu. The skirmishes at Kalabogazi ended the next day with the Ottomans capturing four artillery guns, four machine guns, and 1,000 Russian troops. On December 23, Astoman abandoned his position and moved towards Ardahan. Hafiz Haki sent two divisions to pursue Astoman. At the extreme left wing, the Stang Regiment, which had landed at Trabzon, was to move up the Kora Valley towards Ardahan and through a pass at 2,438 metres 7,999 feet altitude. On December 23, the 92nd Regiment of the Turkish 31st Division, believing the unit in front of them to be Russians, opened fire on the flank of the 32nd Division. The ensuing four-hour friendly fire battle in the fog killed 2,000 Turkish soldiers, and wounded many more. On December 24, Hafiz Haki was well beyond Oltu after having marched 75 kilometers 47 miles in just over three days. However, they were not at the Kars Sarakamish line as planned. On December 25, Ottoman troops had been marching for 14 hours under heavy snow. The soldiers were exhausted and hungry. The fear of frostbite and Russian machine guns was slowly being replaced by absolute indifference. In the early hours of December 26, at the 18th hour of the march, the 91st Regiment of 10th Corps came under enemy fire. 
The Russians left the scene after nearly two hours of fighting. The regiment resumed its march, and soon a snowstorm began. Under these conditions the 91st Regiment managed to reach Kasor from Penik a distance of just 8 km in 21 hours. Other units reached their destinations at a similar rate. While Enver was ordering a night attack, elements of the 10th Corps were spending the night in the villages of Kasor, Arsenik, and Patsik, which were 40, 35 and 30 km from Sarakamish respectively. The Alahuekber mountains were still to be crossed. Thousands of Turkish soldiers died of hypothermia in the snow. The 10th Corps suffered a delay of 24 hours in the Bardas Pass, and 4th Battalion of the Armenian Volunteers lost 600 troops in a battle there. When Commander Malishevsky arrived at Army headquarters in the Russian front lines, he gave the order for a general retreat. The process of withdrawing was to start on December 25 and 26. The Russians evacuated Sarakamish, leaving two cavalry squadrons and 1,000 railwaymen to defend it. Not all Russian commanders were in a state of panic. The Russian army headquarters maintained a solid grip on the situation, with the effective command and control never lost. General Yudenik, taking command of the 2nd Turkestan Corps, decided to put up resistance. On December 28, the Russians were held by the 11th Corps at Horasan. The 9th Corps were at Sarakamish. The 10th Corps were threatening to pierce the Russian front along the Kars Railway to the east. The Stang Regiment was descending upon Ardahan 60 miles to the northeast. Enver's operational plan was looking successful on paper. However, the Ottoman forces were worn out, half-starved, and short of guns and ammunition. They had no hope of reaching their objective on time. Enver thought that the Russians were retreating to cars. It was actually an encircling movement. Topic. Assault at Sarakamish, December 29 On December 29, the assault took place. The 9th and 11th Corps, totaling 12,000 men, began to attack Sarakamish. During bayonet fighting, only 300 men succeeded in breaking into the city. They were driven off, losing 6,000 troops. Enver received information that Russians were preparing to encircle his forces with a force of five regiments. On December 31, the IX Corps was bogged down in the woods outside Sarakamish and had been reduced to some 2,500 men and 14 artillery guns and machine guns. On the same night news arrived to headquarters from Bardis, the 32nd Division had abandoned its positions to the Russians. This meant that the Bardas and Kazilkalai's roads were now in Russian hands. The Ottoman forces were inside a semicircle. Enver refused to lose momentum, and ordered his units to continue with the plan. On January 1, the commander of the 11th Corps pressed a frontal attack on Sarakamish that lasted for the next four days, after that the fighting began to lose momentum. Snow hindered advancing forces which were supposed to bring relief. The IX Corps melted away on the way to Sarakamish. One of the divisions lost 40% of its strength in a snowstorm. The X Corps never came to the rescue. 90% of X Corps was left on the slopes of the Alahuekber Mountains. The XI Corps was fighting in the Aras region. A regiment entered Serkezkoy, only to be taken prisoner. While the Stang regiment entered Ardahan on schedule, the troops were exhausted. The Russians were poised to encircle the remaining forces. Topic. Entrapped in a semicircle, January 2-3 On January 2, Russian artillery fire caused severe casualties. Enver received two reports, one was from the Chief of Staff of the IX Corps, Lieutenant Colonel Seraf, and the other from Colonel Hafiz Haki. Both reports said that they were too weak to launch another attack. 
Enver responded to the units, "...the offensive is to go on at full strength." Later Enver focused on securing routes for the retreat instead of insisting on new attacks to take Sarakamish. He combined the two corps and renamed it the Left Wing Army. He promoted Colonel Hafiz Haki to Brigadier General and gave him command of the Left Wing Army. On January 3, 9th Corps were driven out to the same direction, in which the remnants of the 10th Corps were also retreating. Hafiz Haki was hoping for reinforcements. He did not order his units to retreat as he believed it could be still possible to take Sarakamish. Meanwhile, around 40 km south, the 11th Corps led by Gallup was renewing attacks on Russian lines in an attempt to relieve the pressure on the 9th and 10th Corps positioned in front of Sarakamish. The Russians were advancing and the circle was getting narrower. On January 4, Hafiz Haki toured the front line. He told Isan that the battle was over unless some of the troops on the Allahuekbar Mountains were still alive. Topic. Retreat, January 4–15 On January 6, the Third Army headquarters found itself under fire. The Russians captured the entire 28th Division. The 17th and 29th Divisions were taken prisoner. Eight senior officers including Isan surrendered to the Russians. Among the captives, 108 officers and 80 soldiers transferred to Sarakamish. Hafiz Haki managed to safely reach the headquarters of 10th Corps. He was told that 9th Corps had fallen into the hands of Russians and ordered a total retreat. On January 7, the remaining forces began their march towards Erzurum. On January 11, after four days of travel, Enver and the German officers reached Erzurum. They had stipulated in their original plan that the same route could be taken by the advancing Third Army in two days. The transports dispatched from Constantinople which attempted to land troops and provisions at Trabzon were sunk by a Russian Black Sea squadron and warships. The escorts SMS Gobin and TCG Hamidia were chased back to the Bosporus. On January 17, the remnants of the Ottoman forces in the woods outside Sarakamish were collected, which signaled the end of fighting on this front. The Russian right wing cleared the Korok Valley. Enver's project ended in failure after three weeks of struggle amid high mountains and deep snowdrifts. For a time, at least, Russia was secure from attack in the Caucasus. Hafiz Haki expected that the Russians would use this success to capture the Erzurum fortress. The Third Army immediately tried to take measures, but this proved to be nearly impossible as all the local reserves were depleted. On February 12, Hafiz Haki died of typhus at the age of 36. Otto Lehmann von Sanders, who had been asked before, rejected the position again. Mahmoud Kamil took the command of the army. War Minister Enver never commanded troops in battle again. A German officer attached to the army wrote later, the Ottoman Third Army had suffered a disaster which for rapidity and completeness is without parallel in military history. Topic. Casualties The Ottoman Third Army started with 118,000 fighting men. It was reduced to 42,000 effective soldiers in January 1915, with an additional 12,000 in the Erzurum fortress garrison. 25,000 Turkish troops had become casualties even before the battle started, 30,000 frozen bodies were found by the Russians after the battle, and the entire Third Army was reduced to no more than 12,500 men. There are conflicting figures for Ottoman casualties, though it is clear that the Ottoman casualties were definitely huge, and the military hospitals of the Erzurum area were overflowed with wounded and sick. Sources do not agree on what should be included in the final sum. 
The Turkish official history and medical records states 33,000 Kia, 10,000 died in hospitals, 7,000 prisoners, 10,000 seriously wounded, for some 60,000 total irrecoverable casualties. Another estimate given by the German Commandant Larcher is 90,000 dead and 40,000 to 50,000 captured, which is often repeated in modern recountings of the battle. However, such figures are considered unreliable, both because they exceed the total strength of the entire Third Army and because the actual Chief of Staff of the Third Army, also a German, Lieutenant Colonel Guse, gave casualties as 37,000 dead and 7,000 missing based on operational returns. Artillery losses were 12 field artillery pieces and 50 mountain artillery. The casualties of the conflict escalated beyond the end of the active warfare period as the most immediate problem confronting the Third Army became the typhus epidemic. TAF presents a figure of 60,000 casualties throughout the period of the operation. The Russians took 7,000 POWs including 200 officers. These prisoners were kept under confinement for the next three years in the small town of Varnavino east of Moscow on the Vetluga River. After the final days of the Russian Empire, these soldiers had a chance to return to the ailing Ottoman Empire. Russian losses were up to 30,000 to 16,000 killed and wounded and 12,000 sick, injured, mostly due to frostbite. Topic. Assessment Topic. Operation Enver was the strategist of the operation. Hassan Izzet was the tactician who implemented the plan and remedied the shortcomings. The failure was blamed on Enver. Beyond his faulty estimate on how the enveloped Russians would react, his failure was on not keeping adequate operational reserves. He did not have enough field services to alleviate the hardships faced by the soldiers, he analyzed operational necessities theoretically rather than contextually. Carrying out a military plan in winter was not the major failure of the operation. A valid question is whether or not the plan could have been executed better. It would be hard to exceed the performance of the Turkish soldiers. The 9th and 10th Corps marched with maximum effectiveness given the conditions. The majority of the units managed to move to the correct positions. In respect to the inflicted Russian casualties, they should be credited. The communication and cooperation between the Ottoman units failed, forces functioned as separate units rather than in mutually supporting engagements as originally planned. There was not a sufficient operational reserve established for the size of engagement. The conditions for the Ottoman forces could have been better, if Enver paused the operations on December 24, and had not moved beyond the Oltu line with the artillery pieces. The decision to take the heavy artillery rather than short-range smaller caliber guns beyond the Oltu line was a failure, as the forces faced detachment units with better mobility. The plan had a faulty estimate of the size of the Russian forces. The commanders of the 10th and 9th Corps were replaced with men of little or no experience at the operational level. The Chief of Staff of 9th Corps Kaprululu Seraf Bey said, Troops fought on the top of tall mountains under snowstorm against the artillery of an enemy of centuries and they were completely annihilated, but not a single Turkish soldier has ever turned his back to his nation. In Sarakamish, there was no panic. Topic. Light infantry. During the battle, light infantry was used by both sides. The detachment of Armenian volunteer units on the Russian side, and the detachment 1st Corps unit under the control of Stang, provided a skirmishing screen ahead of the main body of infantry, harassing and delaying of the enemy advance or preventing them escaping. 
The Armenian detachment units were credited in no small measure for the success of the Russian forces, as they were natives of the region, adjusted to the climatic conditions, familiar with every road and mountain path, and were fierce and resolute in combat. The Armenian units were small, mobile, and well adapted to the semi-guerrilla warfare. They did good work as scouts and took part in many severe engagements. Armenian detachment battalions challenged the Ottoman operations during critical times. The delay enabled the Russian Caucasus Army to concentrate sufficient force around Sarakamish. Topic: Cultural references. Ballads Turkish Agitler was a book published in 1943 by Yasar Kemal. It is a compilation of folk themes that include accounts of the Battle of Sarakamish. Vetluga Memoir is a historical document that describes the political and strategic mistakes made by the Ottoman Third Army, and the final days of one corner of the Tsarist Empire written by a young Turkish officer captured by the Russians. 120 is a 2008 Turkish film about 120 children who died carrying ammunition to the battle. The Long Way Home is a 2013 Turkish film about a group of seven people and their quest to escape the war zone of Sarakamish. Reference to the battle was made on one of the automatic rifles that were used in the perpetration of the 2019 New Zealand mosque shootings, which killed 50 people.